Hi everyone, I'm Aria and I'm back with a new tutorial. This time we'll be looking at creating a stylized paint splash using the new Mantaflow simulator in Blender. So make sure you have at least Blender 2.82 and up and we can get started. Also remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. Okay, here we go. Open up a new scene in Blender and you can just select everything and delete it. Then we're going to add a new mesh so hit Shift A, go to Mesh and click Cylinder. Next, hit G, Z, and type in 1.1 to bring it up on the Z axis. And then if you hit the decimal key on your numpad, you can orbit around and focus in on any object in Blender. Next, we want to hit tab, or we can click here and go into edit mode. And you want to add a few more edge loops to support our geometry so that we can subdivide it. So hold control and click R to bring up this guide here. And then you can just click and drag this up to the top. And then we're going to do that again, drag this one down to the bottom. And then we just want to add um, another loop here on the top and the bottom. So hit two on your keyboard, or you can click here to go into edge select mode. And you can see that we can select um, our edges here, but if we hold Alt and click, it will select the entire loop. Then we can hit I and just drag our mouse into the center to inset that face there. And before I do it on the bottom, I just want to show you why we're doing that there. So if you go into the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface, you'll see it's really flat on the top but on the bottom it's really jagged. So let's just get rid of that and we'll hit tab to go back into edit mode and we'll alt select this bottom loop here and I and drag our mouse in to inset that edge as well. Now you can hit tab to go back into object mode and we're gonna right click and shade smooth and then we can just click here and add a subdivision surface modifier. Set both the render and the viewport to three. So now that we've got our base object for our container, what we can do is use this to create our liquid. So we're going to hold shift and hit D, then hit escape to leave it in place. And then we're going to just rename this to liquid. And while we're at it, we can just name this one can or container or cup or whatever you want. Then we can just click here to hide our liquid. So we need that again. Just click on the first cylinder again and we're going to hit tab to go back into edit mode and we need to delete these top faces here. So let's click here or you can hit three on your keyboard to go into face select mode and we're going to select this one here then hold shift and alt at the same time and click here to select this entire edge loop. Hit delete and click faces. Next hit tab to go back into object mode and we're going to duplicate this one more time. So hit shift D and hit escape and we're going to name this here effector and we'll use this to hold our liquid. Now we can hide our can and we want to make sure that we've got our effector selected and we'll hit tab to go into edit mode one more time. And you can see here if I uh, click this little arrow and go down to normals here and display the normals. It shows that our normals are facing outward, which is normally what we would want. But um, for our case and our simulation, we actually want these to face inwards. So we're going to hit A to select everything here. And if we click mesh, go to normals, we can click flip. And now you can see that everything is facing inward. And this is going to work great for our simulation. Okay, so we can hit tab to go back into edit mode and let's just unhide our liquid here, select it, and we're just going to scale it down a bit. So hit S and then type in 0.94 to scale it down a bit just so it's not quite as large as our effector object here. So now that we've got that, we can just zoom out here and we're going to add in our domain. So hit shift A, go to mesh, and we're going to click cube and then we'll hit G. Said and type in 6 to bring it up. Then we'll hit S6 to scale it to um, the proper size. And then just click this little icon here to go into x-ray mode just so that we can see what we're doing while we create the simulation. And the last thing we want to do is hit Shift A, add one more mesh, go to Icosphere, and then we're going to scale this. So hit S and then type in 0.27. And then we're going to bring this up by hitting G, Z, and typing in 9. By the way, these values are very specific, so if you are wanting to follow along exactly and create what I'm creating, just make sure that all the values that you are inputting are the same as what I'm doing, unless you want a different simulation, which is also fine as well. Okay, so now that we've got all the objects for our simulation, what we need to do is just select everything here, and we want to hit Control A and reset all of the transforms and then we're going to right click and set the origin to geometry and now you can see everything is scaled back to the default values um, and that's going to work a lot better for our simulation. 
Okay, so now we can click on the cube here and we can just name this domain just so we know um, what we're going to use it for. And then we can go to the physics tab here. We want to click fluid, click this little menu here and click domain. Change this to liquid instead of gas. And we're going to change the resolution divisions to 96. Let's change the time scale to 2.75. And then you want to make these as high as you can. So we're going to type in 12 and 9. If you can't do that, if your system's not as powerful, at least do something like 5 and 2 if you can. But having these exact values will just get you um, a lot closer to the simulation that I am creating. You can leave all this stuff to default. Click here to add a mesh. You can leave that to default as well. And then we just want to change this to the length of the simulation. In this case, we're going to do 160 frames. And then we can change the end frame of our animation to match that as well. Next, click this object here and we're going to go to fluid again and we're going to click effector and we can leave things as they are. We'll click the effector here and click fluid. Go to effector again and then you want to change this surface thickness to 0.6 or else we'll get um, some leaking in our simulation. And if you are still getting um, a leak after that, you can also change this um, to something higher. And then if all else fails, you can click this here as a last resort, but I'm going to leave it um, for mine because it should work the way it is. And then the last thing we need to do is click the liquid here and we're going to go fluid one more time. Go to flow and we can change this to liquid and leave everything else as default. And then the very last thing we need to do before we start our simulation is just click on this um, second effector object here. And we also want to add a rigid body and leave it to active. And that way it'll actually um, be affected by gravity um, in our simulation. Okay, so now we can bake. So click this domain here. We'll just go down to the bottom here and we can change this from replay to final. And then we're just going to hit bake. Um, this will probably take about um, 15 to 20 minutes on a decent system. So I will pause the video and I will be back when it's finished baking. Okay, so we're done now. We're finished baking. So we can just check it out. If we just hit the space bar, we can hit play. And we can see we've got this really nice slow motion sort of paint splash. And it sort of spreads out there. So it's looking really good. Hopefully yours is looking just as good um, and you're happy with it. Um, and then we can move on to adding our lighting and materials. So first let's just make sure we can turn this off now since we don't need that anymore. We can uncheck x-ray. Okay, so let's go into the shading tab here and the first thing we want to do is add an HDRI. So if you just click on the world tab here, click this little dot and we can go environment texture and then we're going to click open. And you can just find um, an HDRI that you would like to use if you want to use um, the one that I'm using. As always, just go to hdrihaven.com and search for Circus Arena. Um, and we're going to click that and click open. Okay, so let's switch over to rendered view now. Um, so that we can see what things are looking like. Okay, so now we can select our domain here and right click and shade smooth and then we're going to click new. By the way, you can see this little one under here. So just go to the liquid here and click this little eye here and it will hide it. We don't need that um, anymore as well as the effector and then we can actually bring our um, can back in and now click on the liquid here and we can click new to add a new material let's change the base color to something blue or red or whatever you want and then just bring the roughness all the way down you can give it a clear coat if you like and you can leave this IOR if you want here or you can change it to 1.33 now you can see if we hit play we've got this really nice looking paint and it's working really well. It's actually working a lot better than the one that I did in the video. You can see that this paint um, is holding on a lot better because it didn't look this good. So hopefully yours is looking um, like this one a lot better than the one I posted on YouTube a couple days ago. What we can also do is let's just bring up a, um, a new window here. So just right click on the center here and we're going to click join areas and click over there and then just put your mouse down here and you'll see like a little plus symbol so just click and drag we want to bring that up and then we can click here and we can add a timeline just so that we have our timeline controls here in the shading viewport so just go back to frame one so we can see what we're doing 
and you can click on the can here. Before we add a material, is just quickly go into the uh, modifiers properties here. We're going to click this little menu and go to solidify, and then you can set this to whatever you want. I'm just going to set mine to 0 0.05 just to give it um, a little bit of thickness, and then we can click new for a new material. Let's turn metallic all the way up and we can bring down the roughness. So now if we zoom out a little bit here and hit play, you can also add a material to this as well if you like. Um, it's all up to you. And you can see also that um, some of the liquid is showing through so what you can do is just select this here and you can just scale this up a bit so that's not showing anymore. So just click on the um, cup here. You're going to hit S to scale, then hit Shift Z, and we can just drag this out just a little bit until it matches up um, a little bit more to the simulation. Let's go back and hit play, and we'll just take a look. And yeah, it's looking really good. Awesome, so now we can go back to frame one here, and that's basically it. So now if we go back to layout here, we can just turn on uh, rendered view here hit play and we can watch the simulation. You can see that our um, effector object is obviously falling straight through the bottom there so you can add a mesh and hit S5 to scale it up a bit and then you can go over here and click rigid body and change this to passive and then you'll see now that when we play our simulation that the ball um, will get stopped by this it won't fall through so it'll just kind of sit inside somewhere in here. So the only other things that I did for my scene was you can just scale this up to match the size of the domain. And if you hit tab and hit EZ, you can just bring this down here. Uh, let's just go back to frame one so we can see what we're doing. Hit control R to add in some loop cuts on the edges here. Bring these down like that. And then we can hit tab to go back into object mode add a subdivision surface, set this to 3, and then we can right click and shade smooth, and then we can add a quick material as well. We go into here, bring metallic all the way up, and bring the roughness down. And now you've got a nice reflective ground plane. I used um, cycles to my, do my final render, which gives it the really nice um, reflections that you saw. If you want to get um, a little bit more advanced, you can go to um, cc0textures.com and you can download um, proper metallic textures and hook them all up. Um, I'm not going to show you how I did that in this video, but you can check out some of my other tutorials to see um, how to do that. There are also other amazing tutorials on YouTube that go through that as well, so I'm going to leave it here for today, but I really hope you enjoyed this animation. This was one of my favorites, and you can see that... <sighs> is now falling so just make sure that we have a rigid body on there I don't know what happened and that's pretty much everything so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial I had a lot of fun making this one um, and I'd love to see um, how your renders turn out so if you want to render out a frame or two you can send it to my Instagram or send it to me on YouTube or whatever and I'd love to see it so thank you again for following my channel and please like and subscribe next week I'm going to do a hair dynamics tutorial um, so stick around for that and I'll see you when we're back. Okay, bye!